Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I'm in Ireland. Two stacks Irish whiskeys. This is the Blender's Cut, which was finished in a tawny port cask strength. 63.5% uh, ABV, 81 euros 90. So we're talking over 90 euros for this bottle, 0 0.7 liter. So 700 milliliter, whiskey base 167619, and there's 220 bottles worldwide of this whiskey. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to compare it to the original bottle from Two Stacks, which I've already done a video about. This was the blender's cut. This was 64%. ABV, and you can see from the color that there's a definite change here. Here we have the nice little brown, and here we have the nice little red. So um, this was French oak, and in the French oak there was actually a vintage, a 10-year-old towny port, and they actually said there were a couple bottles of um, port wine still in the barrel to keep it nice and wet and fresh. Mmm. Did they take out the, the, the port before they put in the whiskey? Don't think so. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what else can I say? Oh, yeah, there's a nice little thing here. Um, every single whiskey from Two Stack at the moment has this, um, uh, comp uh, what was it, the five components. We have 40% grain whiskey and, an, and a virgin oak. We have 40% um, grain whiskey and an ex-bourbon. We have 8% from a pot still, which means malted and unmalted barley. Very good, that actually spent time in an ex oloroso cask. We have 10% tripled, I'm sorry, double distilled single malt that spent its time in a bourbon cask and 2% peated malt, yay. And all these different types of whiskeys come from one place in Ireland, and that is Great Northern Distillery. Thank you, John Teeling. So Stephen and Jack um, are the sons that actually run and founded um, Teeling Distillery in Dublin. Um, but the papa actually says, in order to have Irish whiskey, we need to have grain. And grain is the most important fa factor for a good Irish whiskey. Which is very funny because the word here, it, you can actually just put the word Irish whiskey here, and it means blend. <laughs> if it doesn't have the word single malt Irish whiskey, it's not single malt. And so um, an Irish whiskey is, from definition, a blended whiskey. Funny, funny story. And so John Teeling's not wrong, but um, so he actually bought an old Guinness um, beer plant and converted it into one of the biggest um, distilleries of our, all of the, um, Ireland. And he is basically the second largest producer of grain whiskey in all of Ireland at the moment. Because all these new commissioned whiskeys are popping up all over the world from Ireland and they all need one thing, grain whiskeys. All right, so this is 64%. This is 63.5. It's very, very strong. Um, this was basically put in that Tony um, um, port cask and left in there for 61 days. All right, let's nose it. I get a light chocolate, but I get a nice um, red fruit note. As if you have, oh yeah, exactly. I've had some very, very cheap chocolate with um, strawberry filling. And the very cheap strawberry filling and the very cheap chocolate. That's what I'm smelling. That's about right. All right, over here. You really do notice that they are um, related to each other. This is actually just the base and this is actually just a finish. And I'm not sure if the finish in this case makes it better. Um, this was 65 euros. Let me see here again. I have my list here. Um, this was 60, this was 70 euros, and this is 82 euros. So it's 12 euros more for 61 days in a port cask. Huh. I'm not sure if it was worth it. All right, let's nip on it. Um, I'm sorry, but the 63.5% is a little bit too much for my sensitive taste buds. So I'm going to dilute it down from the very beginning here. Um, I did my German video, so I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
This tastes this tastes takes water fairly well. You do notice that it's young. There's no age statement anywhere on this. We're in Europe, so it must be at least three years old. Ireland has the same rules as Scotland, three years old. Not three years old in a day, three years old. Um, I would say this is probably not older than four years old. Um, the oldest whiskey from Great Northern is almost five years old, so it can't even be five or six years old. And so um, it's around three to four years old. And for that age, this is pretty good. For that price, it's still a very, very steep. And even on the palate, it's just like, well, hmm. Now, um, with the water, I've diluted down to 55, 58%. Um, it's nice. It's almost um, a smoothness there that you would normally not expect from 58%. All right. Um, but 63 point something is just a little bit too much for my palate. Going over here to the original 64 without water. It is amazing that you can still taste something. And you do have a lot of the wood. You do have a little bit of a peatiness. And it's definitely a grain whiskey that's the, that's the carrier of the taste here. I don't know if I'd be able to pick up the grain whiskey here. One second, let's go back. What I'm looking forward to is the, um, the apricot brandy and French oak. There was a Zeltan, and there was a, what was the fourth one that I forgot? Zeltan, a rum, Barbados rum. Uh, for some reason, the Barbados rum and the uh, Zeltan didn't make it to Germany. Don't forget, there's 222 bottles of these each for the world. And um, Ireland gets it first, and we get a little tiny bit of that, maybe a case or two, maybe six or 12, maybe even 18 bottles of each of these make it over to Germany, and that's a lot, actually. And I'm very happy that I was able to get a bottle of these. I did a bottle share with that. So another, um, let's say, about 12 different people are going to be happy and be able to taste it with, with, with me as well. And so that's just fine. Eh. I think I gave this a C plus. I'm going to give this a more of a C-ish. It's a shame that the, for me personally, the finished product is not better than the original product. I would go for the original any day of the week. I'm getting a little bit of a nuttiness and a little bit of a mushroom. Now, when I say mushrooms, I'm not talking about psychedelic mash mushrooms. I'm talking about the mushrooms you put perhaps in your goulash or in your, on your steak and so on and on your schnitzel. Uh, Germans love mushrooms. They put mushrooms in almost everything if they can. Mushrooms and onions, and I don't like both of those, either of those. Um, <laughs> um, and so it's a, it's a nutty type of mushroom moment. Um, with the chocolate, cheap chocolate and the cheap um, um, strawberry chocolate in the background. Um, eh, not mine. Not really. Not what I like. I don't like it. All right. Um, value for money, D. Taste, C. C minus, around that range for me. All right. Um, I like the concept. I'm very thankful that the three guys that started, um, what was it called again? That was called the Irish. Let me take a look here. It was called the Irish... Um, craft beers, and then they decided to move over to whiskey, that they actually have picked up the concept of whiskey bonders. J.J. Corey Louise has done this now. She's trailblazed that concept, and other people follow her in her wake and are able to actually just go, hey, we're a bonder. Oh, yeah, we know what that is. That's good. Yeah. And J.J. <laughs> JJ Corey with Louise, she just went... Uh, she worked for years to say, I'm not an independent bottler. I'm a bonder. I mix and I blend and I do and I make and I create and it's important. And that's what they're doing as well. And I like that. And thank you very much. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American. My next video is coming after this for the brandy. Um, the apricot brandy, which I don't think I've ever had, let alone as a finish for whiskey. Um, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe to others and also share the video if you'd be so kind. All the best. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.